Hey everybody, welcome back. In this video I'm going to show you how to play the guitar solo from Van Halen's Judgment Day. Now what makes this guitar solo interesting to me is the tapping technique that Eddie employs during the first half of it. Now what he's doing, and I'll go into more detail in just a minute, is he's got his left hand placed over the top of the fretboard and he's tapping two separate strings and then his right hand also comes in to tap on two separate strings. And uh, check out this photo from him on the 1984 tour. Notice the little contraption uh, underneath the guitar which allows him to raise the guitar and have the fretboard and strings parallel to the floor. This allows him to, to attack the neck, so to speak, like a piano. That's why I call it piano tapping. And I actually heard it referred to, to as such uh, way back in the 80s uh, in a guitar magazine. I forget who coined the term, but I'm going to use it too because I liked it, piano tapping. Now this technique is actually easier than it looks. So I'm going to show you how to do that here in this lesson. And I'm going to show you the rest of the solo too, which is actually even easier. Um, and uh, unlike a lot of, or most Van Halen songs, we're not going to be tuning down one half step. We're going to keep it in standard tuning. All right, let's jump on into it. All right, section one is the first part of the finger tapping. And let's first talk about the positioning of your hands. So for now, just rest your left hand over the top of the fretboard somewhere around, you know, the 10th fret region, okay? And then you need to do something with the pick. Normally when you finger tap, at least I do, I take the, the pick and I'm holding it between my thumb and my finger here so I can finger tap and not lose track of the pick. This, in this case, you're going to want to totally get the pick out of the way. So what Eddie does is he puts the pick in his mouth while he's doing this. Um, <laughs> That, I'm just sharing with you what Eddie does. Please be careful. Don't swallow it. Don't choke on it. You can get you can get really hurt or even, you know, it could be fatal if you swallow it. So don't swallow your pick. Be very careful. Um, but for now, I'm just going to take the pick and put it in my pocket so I can keep talking to you. All right. Now, what you're going to do with the right hand is you're going to tap onto the 14th fret of the B string with your middle finger followed by the 14th fret of the D string with your index or pointer finger, like this. Okay? Now with your, with your left hand, there's a couple things going on here. First of all, you're going to be tapping with your middle finger and your index or pointer finger. The other fingers, your pinky and your ring finger, they're going to be dampening the strings behind the scenes. Okay? They're going to be you know, lightly touching the strings to dampen unwanted string noise. You know those, um, what are they called, groove wraps, whatever they're called, the little things people wrap around their necks these days to dampen strings? This is the old-fashioned way, okay? You're using your fingers to do it, all right? Uh, and uh, so while you're doing that behind the scenes, dampening the strings, then you're going to tap with your middle finger on the 12th fret of the G string followed by the 12th fret of the A string. Okay? So the whole, mo the whole pattern, the whole motion goes like this. And you play that eight times. And if you want to get technical about it, what that's doing is it's creating a A7 chord. Okay? Um, over an A power chord in the background, with A's in the rhythm part. So that's section one. Let's move on to the next part. Now for section two, you're taking that same shape. You're just moving everything up two frets. So now your right hand is tapping onto the 16th fret of the B and D strings and your left hand is tapping onto the 14th frets of the G and A strings, okay? You do that shape eight times once again. This time in the background there's a, a B kind of power chord going on and Eddie's doing a uh, B seventh shape over it. Let's move to the next part. Now for section three, again, we've got that same shape. 
um, but we're going to break it up into two different mini sections, if you will. So the first time around, you're, you've moved everything up one fret. So now your right hand is tapping the 17th fret of the B and, G and uh, D strings, followed by the 15th fret of the G and A strings. Okay? And you do that four times. Then you're going to move everything up two frets. So now your right hand's tapping at the 17th, I'm sorry, 19th fret, and your left hand's tapping at the 17th fret. So basically it's four times. So here is this entire section played slowly. Now again, same concept. He's playing, oh, and, and this time in the background it's over uh, a C and then a D chord, so he's basically up here, he's doing a, um, uh, a C7 and then a D7. All right? Same concept, so you're just moving that pattern up the fretboard. Let's move on to the next part. Now for section four, we're gonna shake things up a little bit. Your right hand's gonna be doing um, a similar shape at the 21st fret. So you're gonna type, you're gonna type. <laughs> you're gonna tap the 21st fret of the B string and the 21st fret of the D string. But your left hand's gonna be doing something completely different. What it's gonna do is you're gonna tap middle finger on the 17th fret of the B string followed by the 19th fret of the G string, okay? All right? So, okay, but then after that, you do the right hand motion, okay, but then you move things up to the B and E string, so now you're doing 17th fret E, followed by 19th fret B. Okay, so let's recap what we have so far in this section. You do that six times, okay? Do that whole thing six times. And then after that, you're going to tap onto the 21st fret of both the D and the B at the same time. And then you're just going to take your left hand, now you're going to bring it around, and just do like a slide down the string. So here is this entire section played slowly. was the more challenging part of the solo. Now we go on to the easier part. All right, section five slowly goes like this. Now, a couple things I want to call out here. At the beginning, when I do that, um, those first two second fret F sharp notes, if you want, you can play uh, second fret of both B and E at the same time. You don't have to play those single notes. It sounds to me like that's what he's doing, and I've seen people tab it that way. That's what it sounds like, but you can play both notes if you want, like this. Okay. The most important thing is just getting the feel and the timing right. Notice how after the first two notes, there's almost like a little bit of a pause. See what I'm saying? All right. And then when we do that third fret of the B string slide up to the fifth fret, notice how the third uh, fret note is smaller than the others. I've talked about this before. That means you're just coming out of that note quickly. Okay. You're not dwelling on it like, okay. If I did that, it would sound like this. You don't want to dwell on that note. You want to go through it really quickly. Then after that, we've got that F sharp note, followed by these two little dyads, little two note chords. Okay. With those, um, I've also seen it tab where instead of playing the second fret of the high E, in both cases, you're playing the A note, the second note of 
the fret of the G string. So instead of going, you go, see what I did? I replaced the second fret of the high E with the second fret of the G string. Okay. Um, and I think the reason people are tabbing it that way is because underneath that, there's an A chord going on, so that A note is bleeding through. Um, but when I listen closely, I don't, I don't hear him playing that. I hear him playing. But I think either way you do it, it's going to sound good over that A chord, so you can pick whichever you feel um, sounds better and play it that way. And then with that bend toward the end, um, basically what you're doing is you've got your index finger on the second fret of the B, and then you've got your... Um, ring finger on the 4th fret of the G, and after you strike both strings, you're bending up the 4th fret and then coming back down. But you want to take your time coming down. Okay? You're going up faster than you're coming down. All right? Now, you may have noticed when I was playing this um, at the beginning, it may have looked like I was using my whammy bar during that last bend. I wasn't. I was grabbing it during the bend to prepare for the next lick where I'm going to be using it. Okay, so watch, I'm going to play the whole lick slowly, and watch how and when I grab the whammy bar and prepare for the next section, okay? Okay, see how I grabbed it? As soon as I, did the, as soon as I started the bend, I grabbed the whammy bar to prepare for the next section. So people might think I'm using the whammy bar there. I'm not. I'm preparing for the next part. Let's jump into that. Now for section six, remember we've already got our whammy bar in our hand here, ready to use it. And here it is slowly. So a couple things I want to call out here. First, look at the second note in, that fourth fret of the G. Notice again, it's one of those smaller notes. That's because you're going through that note really quickly, okay? Right up to the sixth fret. You don't want to take your time like this. You want to go through that fourth note quick. And then from the sixth fret, when you're coming back down to the fourth, you want to do a whammy bar dip as you're coming back to the fourth, or right as you're hitting the fourth, okay? Like this. All right? You don't want to, you don't want to do the whammy bar dip after you get to the fourth fret like this. You want to do it as you're getting to it. So here's what we have so far, slowly. Okay. And then after that, you pull off to the second fret. And give it some vibrato. Again, here's what we have so far, slowly. All right, then the second half goes like this. Now, um, a couple things I want to call out here. Again, you've got that quick slide from the 4th to the 6th fret. All right. Now, with that last note, uh, that 2nd fret harmonic on the G string, I tabbed it as 2nd fret, but really it's just past the 2nd fret. Like maybe 2.25 or 2.3, if you were to tab it accurately, you're going to go just past that 2nd fret. And sometimes it can be a challenge to grab that one. <laughs> You know, you got to use a lot of gain. I don't use as much gain as, as most Van Halen fans. I tend to pull back a little bit for, you know, more of a clean, meatier tone than an oversaturated tone. Um, but if you have trouble hitting that harmonic, one thing that you can consider doing is bring the bar down a little bit first. You know, like bring it down, like maybe about the bar about, you know, this much, and then hit the note, and then come back up really quickly and then go down. I found that helps at times. <laughs> Okay? So experiment, you'll find the sweet spot on your guitar. Alright, so section 7 is very similar to section 5 with a few little minor differences, but here it is slowly. All right. 
So the key differences are when I do those um, second fret, that's played a little bit differently. I don't do the single notes at the beginning and I just do it consistently through. There's no pause, right? I just do it 10 times. All right. Then when I do that fifth fret note, I'm not sliding into it. I'm just playing it. Okay. Otherwise, it's completely the same as the other section. And again, notice at the very end, I grab my whammy bar during that bend to prepare for the next section. So here's this one slowly one more time. All right, let's move to the last section. Okay, so section eight is, again, very similar to section six. We've, we're starting again with the whammy bar already in our hand from the prior uh, preparation, the prior section. And it begins just like uh, section six with this. And then once again, it continues accordingly, the same as number six, section six, like this. And then it, and then it changes a little bit. So from there, you hammer on to the fourth fret of the G, followed by 2 1. Okay, followed by that 2 1 2 at the end. All right, so one more time, here is the final section slowly. All right, that was my video showing you how to play the guitar solo from Van Halen's Judgment Day. If you enjoyed it, feel free to hit that thumbs up and subscribe while you're at it, and hit the notification bell so you can get all of my videos as soon as they come out. Um, I have quite a few Van Halen lessons here on YouTube, so make sure you check those out. And uh, if you have any questions, as usual, leave them down below, and I will answer them as time allows. Until next time, rock on.